Hallelujah. Lord, we just worship mm -hmm. you tonight. We thank you for uh, this new month. We yes. rejoice, Lord, with the Lord. We yes. ask that you speak to us during this month and, Hallelujah. and show us your glory thank and you, help Lord. us to be in a in a heart and posture to receive yes. all that you have for us in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Amen. so cool when we blow the shofar because we're set, we're causing people to awake out of their slumber and their sleep but we're also bringing confusion on the enemy that's why we blow that shofar he gets confused so uh we and we have the victory in Elul we know that this is our victory month we know that we have great fortune great favor this month and we're just so excited about the king being in the fields and his visitation uh in his presence he he's gonna reveal his presence to us in a, in a fresh new way. So be looking for that and be expecting that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we are going to get to our, eventually we're going to get to the, okay. the slides if I can figure out how to do it <laughs> uh, just for a second, because somehow it wasn't at the right slide and I will fix it. Uh, I only play. And it, please let me know if it's not right by my phone because I will not be able to receive messages mm -hmm. um, while we're doing the Torah study. We're excited about this week, Kate said, say, when you yeah. go out, Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 25, yeah. 19, Isaiah 54, 1 through 10. Oh, I love Isaiah 54. I suggest just read all of Isaiah yeah. 54, Psalms 32, John 14, 9 through 20. And then what you want to do also during this uh, month of Elul is read Psalms 27 mm -hmm. every day. So in this Torah portion, Israel is reminded of who they are and to be careful. They've got to be mm -hmm. careful when they go out to war yeah. and have to leave their encampment. The new generation yeah. um, who will eventually possess the land through Joshua are also reminded some previous instructions and also some new instructions. Um, so that's what's going on. The Torah portion is going to end with a reminder to blot out or erase the memory of Amalek um, because they're the first to attack Israel when uh, unprovoked and harm those who could not defend themselves at the outskirts of the encampment. The people of Israel were not to be cruel. This is diff Israel is not like any other nation. Right. They're, they're operating under the kingdom of, of, of God, the yes. kingdom of, of yod heh And so they're not to be cruel to their enemies, even at wartime. Mm -hmm. This is so different. It is just, this is just a different mindset. But the Torah also recognizes that men, especially during wartime, the nefesh or the soul, yeah. the, the, that blood is stirring, if you will. The blood yeah. is, okay. So the men... They could not, even though they're stirred up and their, their blood's boiling, they cannot rape or take advantage yeah. of a woman. And so this is how the Torah starts. When you go out is Ki Tetze in Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 14. Pastor Lisa is going to read. When you go out to battle against your enemies and the Lord your God hands them over to you and you lead them away captive and you see a beautiful woman among the captives and desire her and would take her as your wife. Then you shall bring her home to your house and she shall shave her head, trim her nails in preparation for mourning. She shall take off the clothes of her captivity and remain in her house and weep and mourn to her father, for her father and her mother a full month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband and she shall be your wife. But it shall be that if you have no delight and take no pleasure in her, then you shall let her go wherever she wishes. You certainly shall not sell her. For money, you shall not deal with her as a slave or mistreat her because she is humbled because you have humbled her by forced marriage. So the reason for the one month process, and this is going mm -hmm. back to the, the, the sages, the, the understanding of this scripture mm -hmm. by the Jewish people, that there's a there's a this month long process where the woman would have her hair totally shaved, her nails clipped the changing of her garment is to let that warrior man's nefesh yeah. be calmed over time to make sure yeah. 
So this is really amazing to make yeah. sure he's not acting purely in the flesh. You know, he wants her, he sees her in battle. He might have um, in that war, you know, that her, her parents could have been killed or her, her right. husband. It doesn't, we don't know what happened. She's going to be in a state of mourning and he's going to have that 30 days of cooling off period. Mm -hmm. I think it's healthy. And many times what would happen is the guy would say, you know, I, I don't know what came over me, but I don't want to get married to this woman. And you let her go. Right. Okay. So uh, that's the reason for that process. Now, two wives. This is interesting. Yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17. If a man has two wives, one loved and, and another unloved, and both the loved and the unloved have borne him sons, and the firstborn son belonged to the unloved wife, then on the day when he wills his possessions to his sons, he cannot treat the son of his loved wife as a firstborn in place of the son of the unloved wife, the actual firstborn. Instead, he shall acknowledge the son of the unloved as the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he, had, he was at the beginning of his strength, generative power. To him belongs the right of the firstborn. So... Two wives is not ideal. Mm -hmm. And the Torah previously states that a married woman's rights should not be diminished. So think about this. It automatically, if what if you have two wives, one woman, yeah, her rights are going to be diminished. So it's basically a roundabout way to let you know two wives is a no-no. It's not God's best. Right. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. And we'll look at that in a moment. But so Exodus 21 10 it says. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. So that so the Torah is also correcting the wrong of Jacob, mm -hmm. not for having two wives. It's not his fault. He right. didn't choose to have right. two wives. Right. Not for having two wives, wait to leave a Leah, but for favoring Joseph, mm -hmm. the son of Rachel, the love wife, over Reuben, the rightful firstborn of Leah, who the Bible calls hated or the less loved. Yeah. This is exactly what happened in this in that story, mm -hmm. um, which caused a lot of problems for the whole family. Yeah. Um, so the favoring of Joseph, who is the father of Ephraim and Manasseh, is what happens commonly today when a parent divorces and remarries. Mm -hmm. Because many times the children of the first wife, who is now unloved, right. does not get their rightful portion from mm -hmm. daddy. So, right. so really the Torah is remember even though um we don't really practice two wives today right, the principles, right. the principles are there the patterns yeah. are there and that's what we yeah. we can't follow everything uh, perfectly and and everything is not in place now because especially because we don't have a temple but the principles are always in place yeah so Deuteronomy 21 22 and if a man have committed a sin worthy of death and he be put to death and thou hang him on a tree okay so now there's a there, if there's someone deserving to die, it says mm -hmm. you can put them to death and then you hang them on a tree. And this is the order before being hung on the tree or the cross. Mm -hmm. The person who committed the sin is put to death, most likely by stoning. And that's yeah. in the verse pre uh, previous, verse 21 yeah. of Deuteronomy 21 tells you about the wayward son, which I believe all of that is a prophecy about Yeshua yeah. because he wasn't really a wayward son, but he took the place of the wayward he son. He it, was, yes. he suffered as if he was a wayward son. Yeah. Though then he's to be hung on a tree, but not overnight. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is, and Deuteronomy 21, 23 says His this. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise <clears throat> bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So when this person is hung on a tree, the Torah speci specifies that you cannot leave that dead body right. overnight. It can hang there during the day, but it says bury him that he has to go he can it can't be all night on that tree or on that cross mm -hmm. why because it's going to defile it's going to make the land tame and god doesn't want that land ever to mm -hmm. to be unclean so he says you got to get that body in the grave you got to bury that body um now i wanted to show you something the first mm -hmm. mention of hanging on a tree is in the story of pharaoh mm -hmm. and with the uh the dream that the, the butler and the baker has when Joseph's in prison. 
Genesis 40, 19. That within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the bird shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Okay, this is one of just the amazing, it's the first mention of a hanging on a tree mm -hmm. and it's been, the, the dream is interpreted by Joseph who's in prison. And of course, this is not a favorable right. um, interpretation of the dream, unlike right. the butler who gets restored. Um, this baker, he's a chief baker. In the Hebrew, it's a czar, it's a captain, it's a prince. Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh's prince baker, um, the one who's making bread was hung, but also was Haman, yeah. the chief counselor to the king. It's almost like both people that are hung in, in these mentions in Genesis 49 and then later in the book of Esther, mm -hmm. you're going to find their princes. It's, 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 mm -hmm. I think it's it's a prophecy showing us of, of the one who will come to die as the prince the real prince, the true yeah, prince. Okay. Yeah. So now the root word for curse, because you're cursed if you hang on a tree. It's the, the root word is kalal and it's to make light. It's uh, trifling, to be vile, to be a bait, to bring it to contempt, to curse, to despise. It, it's not a good word um, mm -hmm. in any sense. And if you can see what we know about in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament, Galatians 3.13, Messiah liberated us from Torah's curse, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So the apostle Paul, he's a Torah scholar. Mm -hmm. He sat under Gamaliel. He probably memorized the whole Torah. And God used him, of all people, to relate right. to the nations coming in. Right. The Torah, because they needed the Torah, mm -hmm. and they needed an expert in the Torah. And he's now, he's He's showing us the work of Messiah. Okay, what's a Messiah is going to come? He's not going to liberate you from Torah, which many people don't misinterpret because it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say that. He frees you from Torah's curse, curse. the curse of the Torah, right. having become a curse for us. And he and Paul is basically quoting this scripture that we read in Deuteronomy about don't leave the body overnight because curse is everyone who hangs, cursed by God is everyone yeah. who hangs. You know, and Hands there's another it. understanding of that scripture you study out. It's not just cursed by God, but it's a curse to God to let the man that he created yeah. hang on the hang overnight. Mm. So, so Yeshua is the hanged one mm -hmm. who took the curse of man's yes. disobedience mm -hmm. from the time. And where did this go back to? Man disobeyed from the time of the first man in the mm -hmm. Garden of Eden and those all, who would come from that bloodline. So he's taking the curse. He's suffering for the curse of every man from the time of Adam yeah. until it's yeah, really never until, ending. Right. It's really never ending. So right. look at Isaiah 53, 4, 5, and 12. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our pains, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck by God and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our transgressions. He was crushed because of our iniquities. The chastisement for our shalom was upon him and by his stripes. We are healed. Therefore, I will give him a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the mighty, because he poured out his soul to death and was counted with transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. And I love, I, I include verse 12, because I want to say, yeah. okay, he's on that cross as an act of intercession. He's being a mediator yes. right there. He's healing the broken relationship, the cursed relationship, if you will, mm -hmm. between man adam and and god yeah. and and he's not there for himself he's there for you he's there for me he's he's a he's a, he's forever interceding he's he always yes. a, he lived a life of intercession he died interceding if you will um and he took our peace he was punished for so we could have shalom mm -hmm. so and i and I, I wanted you to see we esteemed him stricken yeah okay that hebrew word stricken a h fifty sixty. The first, one of the first mentions of that word is in reference to the blood of the lamb. This is so amazing. Yeah. Exodus 12, 22. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike <laughs> the lintel and the two side posts 
with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. Remember, Israel could not leave Egypt yeah. until they went through the bloody door. And right. how did the door get bloody? The, 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 the lamb had to be slain. That perfect lamb had to be slain. It had to be eaten with bitter herbs, you know, and, and unleavened bread. And how did you put the blood on the door? Through that striking. And it says, Isaiah 53, he was we, yeah. we considered him stricken, struck, yeah. struck. And it's true. God struck him. So the same word for stricken by God is the same way Israel was to take the blood of the lamb strike and strike. It. I never saw this before. Strike but I think it's it. like you strike the blood on your on the doorway of your heart yeah. because the stricken one, you know, his blood is applied to you. I just think that's so many. So and, and that's how we get out of Egypt. How yeah. do we get out of spiritual Egypt? We get out of it through strike the striking, striking of, the blood of the blood on our hearts. On yes. our hearts. You know, hallelujah, he was stricken for us. So Yeshua is our Passover lamb who was stricken by God as an innocent lamb to redeem and save all. And I just say from spiritual Egypt, because we, yes. we all came out of Egypt. We, we're all Hebrews. We all had to had come out of darkness and, and come into the light. Romans 5, 12. So then just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, in the same way, death spread to all men because all sinned. For if by the one man's transgression, death reigned through the one, how much more shall those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one Messiah, Yeshua. So it's like every the Lord just reserve, reversed everything through Yeshua. So then through the transgression of one, condemnation came to all men. Likewise, through the righteousness of one came righteousness of life to all men. For just as through the disobedience of one man, many were made sinners. So also through the obedience of one man, many will be set right forever. So remember, uh, Paul's yeah, a Torah yeah. scholar. He's he's. He's sewing, if you will, yeah. the, the, the thread from Genesis, yeah. to, to, you know, from the beginning through the prophets, through the Psalms. So there, so now the type and shadow of the laying down of his life, Yeshua's life was the story of Abraham and Isaac who went to the place God told them, which was, they didn't know the place, but it was Mount Moriah mm -hmm. in a three day journey mm -hmm. of obedience and laying down of the life as, of Isaac as an Ola elevation, resurrection, going up, offering to the Lord. So think about this. It took him three days before um, Abraham's about to slay his son because he doesn't know. He says, just, he just offer him up. He thinks, well, I, I guess I got to kill my son. He says, no, I just, I just want you to, to do it as an act of faith. I want you to, to demonstrate this prophetically so people can look back and look, it was a three day journey. So Yeshua yeah. dies. And when is he resurrected in three, three days. days? I mean, yeah. it's the types and shadows are, are just so amazing. So um, nothing in the Bible doesn't connect. The, right, the, right. the curse of this guy hanging on a tree, Paul picks up and I say, no, it, it's not just anybody, it's Mashiach. He's yeah. going to be cursed for man. So the cross, if you think about this, the cross, the tree, the etz, um, it's where we get the word for counsel, etza, the, the real, it's the counsel of God, it's the mystery of God. The cross is a point of contact for faith and to trust in what the Lord has already done by the laying down of the life of Yeshua willingly in obedience and faith to God's instructions. Why do we, why was, why do we teach the cross, preach mm. the cross? It's a point of contact. It's something people can see. They can identify. Okay. Is he on the cross now? Is Yeshua on the cross? No, mm -mm. but the cross, um, we can teach people. We teach people the cross. Okay. It was a place of suffering. It's a place of God's wisdom and, and majesty. The Bible says if the princes of the world would have known what they're doing, they, they wouldn't have even done, done it. it. So it's, it's a, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I just love how God just works his, his, his uh, ways. So faith and obedience has always been the model for righteousness. Just let that sink in for a moment. Think about that. Say for a that moment. again. Faith and obedience has always been the model for righteousness. Mm. It's, it's, mm. it's been from Genesis chapter one, mm -hmm. when Adam was told you can eat all the trees, but you don't eat this one, one right. because if you touch it, you die. Right. All God was saying is, believe me, have emuna, have faith, obey me, and mm -hmm. it's going to be accounted for you for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yeshua. So it's not one or the other, just like righteousness. Righteousness is not just imputed. It's also practical. Um, it 
it's both. And mm-hmm. we got to get this in our mind that now, is it first faith? Absolutely. You first yes. put your trust in God, but then after yeah. that, you're going to hold in your hand, the commandments. You're going to say, okay, father, daddy, what do I do? I'm part of your family. Right. Right. So Galatians three, six through 11, just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, know then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. The scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaimed the good news to Abraham in advance, saying, all the nations shall be blessed through you. Now, before I go on, just think about something. Last, on Shabbat, we talked about the good news. Mm-hmm. We talked about the good news, right? you know getting rid of the cares and the tears because it's, you know god god said there's good news how beautiful are people, those who proclaim look what it says he proclaimed the good news to abraham yeah, god for, god preached the good news yeah. god's the first one who preached the gospel right all nations shall be blessed through you in you mm-hmm. now keep going so then the faithful are blessed along with abraham the faithful one for all who rely on the deeds of torah under a curse For the scriptures say, cursed is everyone who does not keep doing everything written in the scroll of the Torah. It is clear that no one is set right before God by Torah, for the righteous shall live by imunah. Imunah is faith. Okay, so now look at look what it says. So it's very interesting. Verse 10, because we need to divide the word. We need to rightly divide the word. Because people get confused, especially in the writings of uh, Romans, the writings of Galatians. They, They misunderstand Paul. So it says, for all who rely on the works or the deeds of the Torah are under a curse. It's not that you're under a curse for doing it when you rely on it as a means of your personal righteousness before God. So if you're saying, I am right before God because of what I do, I'm putting my trust in my own works. That's mm-hmm. dangerous. And that's one of the things Paul was dealing with, right. with the self-righteousness of the Pharisees, the scribes, mm-hmm. the Sadducees. So he was dealing that, and that was in the congregation. Right. That Because remember, the congregation is a mixture of every person, and they're going right. to have, uh, they're going to have, they're going to not all be taught right. Right. So they're going to, many of them be taught, okay, get circumcised, do the Torah, but they don't understand, okay, everything is done by faith. Every, yeah. Okay, so now, obedience to the commandment is never to be done with pride, Mm-mm. never to be done with arrogance or a way to prove your self-righteousness before God or man. Why? Because that's not God's way. That's self-righteousness. That's, mm-hmm. that's putting your own works ahead of faith. Mm-hmm. and Abraham didn't do that and Yeshua didn't do that so obedience is to be a companion of, of faith. faith yeah out of love and a renewed heart it's not to be prideful to mm-hmm. be arrogant to prove I know more Torah I'm doing it better I got this thing mm-hmm. figured out I, I keep the law better than you God's look like likes me more you know, yeah. that's the wrong heart but that was going on Things like that. Not exactly, but things like that. So the commandments were never a means to salvation, Mm -mm. but a way for the Lord's blessings to flow to his people on earth. Why? Because we know Deuteronomy over and over, not just Deuteronomy, blessings flow through obedience. Right, right. You choose life and death, and death. Yeah. blessing or, uh, or curse. good or good right blessing yeah. or curse you choose it because i want i want yeah. a place for blessing to flow and the way my blessing flow is when you're in alignment and yeah. that the commandments help you align to the kingdom yes. and the kingdom ways and the kingdom mindset yeah so revelation 22 look blessed, what it says blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city it said you're blessed Yes. You're blessed, and 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 you're gonna eventually put your hand totally on that tree of life, yes. and you're gonna you're gonna live in eternity with God. Um, it's through the righteousness of Yeshua, but the blessings are gonna flow. Blessed are they that do His yeah. commandments. It, yeah. it, it doesn't even take now that truthfully, this is what Jews are doing right now. Right. Many of them are just doing the commandments. Right. It's not in faith. Right. It's no. just because God uh-huh. said it. And right. are they being blessed? Yes. Because this is this is what the word says. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the Torah reminds the Israelites, if you're going to keep going in this Torah portion, how to treat one another. Yeah. Very important. Such things as returning your property, returning animals, clothing, um, 
helping those animals who have fallen, such as the mm-hmm. onk or the donkey. And some of these things that have been repeated before, but it's reminding this new generation. Okay. Yeah. Deuteronomy 22, five. A this, woman, a yeah. woman is not to wear men's clothing, and a man is not to put on women's clothing. Whoever does these things is <coughs> okay. A, I guess it got it got um, is abominable. <coughs> That's what the scripture got cut off. Now you have to tell me what I did, but I did I think something. It okay. is abominable. It says, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, yes, it's an abomination. Yeah. It's detestable before God. So Ecclesiastes one nine tells you the thing that hath been is. It is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So I know we are dealing heavily. Yes. I don't know if it's in all the world, but I know in America, mm-hmm. you we are dealing with people that are doing cross dressing. Yeah. And they, and if you're a if you're a Christian or you're a, you're walking the Torah or Hebrew roots or we, I don't know, revive roots, uh, messianic, whatever you want to call it, I don't give them the way. Once you know this scripture and you understand Deuteronomy 22 is this okay? You can say this is Old Testament. Is it been done away with? No. Is it still valid today? Yes. Are we? Is the Torah so smart that thousands of years ago? But well, I don't know. Is it four thousand years? Yeah, they were doing it. God warns the people yeah. about a day like us, which is common where I, I there's sometimes and I was in Brazil and I was telling Pastor Lisa, I was praying for somebody and I literally didn't know mm-hmm. who, I, based on what they were wearing and their haircut, yeah. I did not know what, I, I believe I got it right in the end, yeah. but, but I did get it right But I by, by the Holy Spirit. But really, if I was just looking at this person, I could not tell because they're not obeying this commandment. No. Just think no, about it. And exactly. so we have to let our kids know. Deuteronomy 25. Boys, you got you can't look like a girl. Yeah. Girls, you can't look like a boy. I mean, th- okay, we're not gonna go on to I'm not saying but anymore. you know, one of the things I just want to interject <laughs> is that is why, you know, in the Ecclesiastes, it says it plainly. And I was just talking to a person who's not doesn't serve the Lord at all. Right. And they were talking about all the craziness that's going on in the world. They were telling me the craziness. <laughs> and they're not a believer. And right? they're not a believer. And I quoted the scripture. I said, do you understand this was going on thousands of years ago? I said, but because people had a knowledge of Torah, they had a knowledge of right and wrong. We saw it diminished. But now in our society, there is a generation that does not know right from wrong their parents do not know right from wrong so the reason it's popping up so prevalent is because we have lost torah which lets me know how much we need to encourage people to go back and read the torah why do you read the torah paul tells it it's a it's a um to tutor us right and i know we're born again i know we have the holy spirit but think about the people who do have no idea. Paul was dealing with this as they were coming. It gives you the knowledge of sin. It gives you the knowledge of right and wrong. You will not know it. You will not. Without it. And and even what you just said about if if you see something happen, come on, people see things happen all the time. And what's their standard answer? Well, I was afraid to help, right? But Torah says flat out, if someone, you see someone's dog Mm -hmm. get out from their fence, you need to go get that dog and bring them back. That's Torah. That's just, now when I was a little girl, that's just called being a good neighbor. But now people don't get that. So we, this is why I believe that the message that um, God has instructed us to teach on is so important because if we don't teach our kids they're, they're not going to know how to teach their kids. And even when they go to school, they're going to be that light because they're going to do things differently. You and your job, you're going to do things differently. Why? Because you know Torah. And I think, I just think it's so amazing. You know God's instructions. And it's so important. This it's, is why this is being revived. This it's revived, being revived. Call it. This is being revived because it's needed. It's in, so yes, needed. It's, and it's the weapon that's going to eventually cause uh, the enemy's kingdom to crumble. Yes. The stone of the Torah. Okay. Deuteronomy 22, 6 through 12. If there happens to be a bird's nest in front of you along the road in any tree or on the ground with young ones or eggs and the hen sitting on the young or on the eggs, you are not to take the hen with the young. You must certainly let the hen go 
but the young you may take for yourself so that it may go well with you and you may prolong your days. Mm. So please look at that note that as long as the mother, this is powerful. If the mother refuses to leave her children, her young cannot be taken from mm -mm. her. So if you can't get that hen to shoot, yeah. and I believe this is prophecy. I believe this is how we need to be as, yes. as spiritual moms over our kids. Yes. If you say, I'm not letting the enemy I'm not have letting my, go. You can't take my kids. No. Because I'm here. Yes. As long as the mother refuses to leave, and, and this really is the story of uh, Jacob and Leah and all, and, and Rachel's kids yes. when they were going to face Esau. Yes. You will see that Rachel had her kids right next to her. Right. And she said, you can't have my kids. Right. Exactly. I mean, you'll, you'll see it in the scripture. So yeah. it, it's prop it's prophecy. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep reading. Uh, I don't know what happened. Hold on. It was doing uh, okay. Okay. Keep going. When you build a new house, you are to make a guardrail for your roof so that you do not bring the guilt of blood on your house. If anyone falls from it, you are not to plant your vineyard with two kinds of seeds or else the whole harvest will be forfeited. Both the seed you plant and the produce, the vineyard. You are not to plow with an ox and a donkey together. You are not to wear woven mixtures, wool and linen together. You are not to make for yourself twisted threads or on, you are to make for yourself twisted threads on the four corners of your garment in which you cover yourself. Okay, so there's some things that the scripture is talking here. No mixings of No mixing of seeds in the field. No plowing with the ox and the donkey together. Mm -hmm. No wearing of wool and linen. You see a lot of mixing there. We know the word for Babylon means confusion by mixture. Right. God is letting the people know in advance, when you follow me, there's not going to be mixture. Right. You're not, because mixture brings confusion. Yes, yes. Okay, so now, the only mixing, God says, yeah. okay, the only mixing the is going to be the seat seat wearing on all four, four corners, four corners of a garment, the commandments. And what's going to happen in the seat seat? The seat seat is going to be linen threads, but there's going to be one to kill it, one blue wool. And it's the only time. So it's really interesting. So God's saying, okay, you're going to have to learn how to discern only right. through my word when it's okay to put the two together <laughs> the two, yes it's, exactly uh speak to and, the, and the wool the blue the sekelet the linen which is shesh shesh which is amazing and then the the uh the the blue the blue is to remind you of heaven the blue yeah. is to remind you of the kingdom now new numbers 15 38 talks about the tzitzi let's yes. just read it for a second Stu speak to ben israel say to them they are not to make for themselves tzitzis on the corners of their garments throughout their gender wait i keep saying that they oh, they are, are they are oh, <laughs> okay devil you're a liar say to them that they are to make for themselves tzitzi on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and they are to put a blue cord on each tzitzi it will be your own seat seat. So whenever you look at them, you will remember all the mitzvot of Adonai and do them and not go spying out after your own hearts and your own eyes, prostituting yourselves. Now, the, mm. you're going to read the next scripture in a moment, but I just want you to yeah. see one thing. Look, it says, it will be your own, own seat seat. Okay. Yeah. And we can't have time to do a study on that, but seat seat, the root word has to do with flowers. It's almost like a, you're blooming. Ah. Okay. So whenever you look at them, you have, it's not about seeds. Some people think it's, oh, oh I'm wearing the seed seed for other people to know. It's, the Bible doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. Now there are, there's a scripture where 10 men are going to grab hold of your, the, your seed seed, right? But what's the primary purpose of the seed seed is you look at that seed seed. So you don't go touring, spying after your own hearts. You let the cloud guide you and not yeah. what, not your own eyes uh, guide you. So you it's about you look at and so that's why it's okay you can wear the seat seat underneath your clothes right because it's for you to look at right it's oh. a reminder yes. of who you are it's a reminder of whose field you're in you just said it's the flowers whose field am i in it, it goes what am i producing that, but it, it's yes oh that's awesome your authority 
your witness. You, you know, okay, so now, oh, wow. so you don't go whoring. The word whoring there, mm. okay, this is crazy. It's sana in the Hebrew. So you don't go whoring after what you see with, uh, with go go your eyes, hearts, your own eyes, prostituting yourself. Okay, sana, the root, they keep, they said this, and it's like, I keep, this is so interesting. The root word means to be highly fed mm. and therefore wanton. I mean, it's like, that's interesting. It's like you're so fed yeah. that that you're you want more that that you're not satisfied. I was like that you're so you're roaming to now. So it's about committing adultery, usually of the female, less often of simple fornication, rarely of involuntary ravishment, figurative to commit idolatry. The Jewish people being regarded as a spouse of Yehudah Bave, the cause to commit fornication continually. Great to be at or play the harlot, the cause to be, to play the whore, to commit or fall into hoarding, right? To go hoarding or hoarding. So the seat is helping you yeah. not go astray. Yes. Okay. The first mention of that word harlotry is with um Dina. Yeah. And Dina gets raped and the brothers are upset with dad. It's like, dad, you're not doing anything. They said, you shouldn't deal with our sister as a harlot that's the first mention yeah the judge okay to deal with our sister who's dina her she's she her, what does her name mean judge judge so mm. it's the female form of dan mm. should he deal with judgment as with a harlot you get your judgment wrong right when you don't have the cc to keep yes. the judgment right you're looking at the cc you're looking at that thread that blue thread that's showing you heaven you're remembering the commandments Mm. Okay, uh, now we'll keep moving in the Torah portion, Deuteronomy 23. No Amorite or Moabite is entered the community of Adonai, even to the 10th generation. None belonging to them is to enter the community of Adonai forever, because they did not meet you with bread and water on the way when you came out from Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, son of Beor, from Petor of Aram Naharam to curse you. <laughs> yeah, someone needs to just study that out yeah. because I think that's the first time it mentions all that about, about yeah. uh, all those names about um, Balaam. Balaam. Okay. But Bye. Adonai, your God, refused to listen to Balaam, and Adonai, your God, turned the curse into a blessing for you because he loves you. You are never to seek their shalom or welfare all your days. You are not to detest an Edom Edomite, for he is your brother. You are not to detest an Egyptian, for you are an outsider in his land. The children born to them, the third generation, may enter the community of Adonai. So even mm -hmm. Israel, though Israel was enslaved in Egypt, even though Esau was threatened to kill Israel and, and tried it many mm -hmm. times, they're still brothers. Yes. Uh, I mean, I mean Edom, is, Edom is a brother, but it, you don't you don't detest them. And they can come the to third, faith. They yeah. can come even yeah. to be part of Israel. It's just, okay, so God loves Israel. God refuses to listen to Bilaam and he canceled the bad news and he made it good news instead. So mm. I love that about God. Why does God reverse curses in our life? Because he loves us. You know, that that's the yeah, point. He, he cancels in fact, he didn't even let a curse come. If you look at that that mm -hmm. whole story of Balaam, Balaam never even could, he never mm -hmm. could get a kalal or a rar curse, curse out of his mouth. Every time he tried to curse, instead, he's, he's prophesying right. blessing. The Ammonite, he's related to Lot and Abraham. And what, what do we know about Abraham? Abraham is known for his kindness. Yeah. They should have shown kindness to their own family, but instead the Moabite tried to curse Israel. So Ammon and Moab, didn't give Israel bread and water. Abraham is sitting at the, the, the heat of the day in his tent. And what is he doing? He's giving bread and water to whoever right, comes right. by. That's the example. That's and, and now to your family, Yeshua ups this. He says, listen, don't just love those. Don't just love your family. Right. He says, right. love those that even hate you. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So we've got to have this spirit of Abraham and we got to be kind yeah. like Yeshua taught. Look, Luke 6.35. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Anytime you can practice Torah, do it. Being kind is practicing Torah. Being nice is practicing Torah. Why? Because God, love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them. I mean, this is amazing. This is like, wow. Mm-hmm. 
he's kind to the and thankful and to evil. And that's why people today, many of them, they're not living for God. And you see, they have quote, quote, blessings. They have stuff. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have prob more problems than we, but they have stuff. And part of it is because they're getting their reward right now. Right. Because God's not cruel. He's kind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Matthew 5, 44, 48. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do the same, don't they? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than anyone else? Even the pagans do that, don't they? Therefore, be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. They should never say about mm -hmm. us, Torah people, whatever, you're mean. That's right. And I know they say that about, quote, quote, some people. Yeah. But I don't want to be, I want the Lord to have to help us with this spirit that yes. we have the spirit yes. that Yeshua has a spirit that Abraham had and that people say wow I don't agree with them but they're kind they're yes. they're not good people they're nice people. so Bible talks about in the Torah portion you got to guard when you go out you got to guard from every evil thing mm. Deuteronomy 23 10 when you go out as an army camp against your enemies you are to guard yourself from every evil you can just thing preach all that night yeah. that one thing about oh, keep going if there's <laughs> among you a man who is not clean from a nighttime emission he is to go outside the camp he may not re-enter the camp now toward evening he is to bathe in water and when the sun sets he may re-enter the camp there is to be a place at hand for you outside the camp and you are to go there outside you are to have a shovel for yourself among your weapons. Now, when you sit down outside, you are to dig with it and turn and cover up what comes out of you. Rather know your God walks in the midst of your camp to rescue you and to give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp must be holy so that he does not see anything indecent among you and turn away from you. I just think this is just, wow, this life lessons right here. And now we're going to move on to Deuteronomy 24, marriage and divorce. Suppose a man takes a wife and marries her. Now she doesn't find favor in his eyes because he has found something indecent in her. He has to write her a certificate of divorce, hand it to her and send her out from his house. When she leaves his house, she may go and become another man's wife. Now suppose the second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce and he hands it to her and she leaves his house or suppose the second husband who took her is to to be his wife dies. Then the former husband who sent her, her away may not take her again to be his wife after she has been defiled, for that would be detestable before Adonai. You are not to bring guilt on the land that Adonai your God is giving you as an inheritance. So I'll give you a quick plug for a book by Robin Gould about marriage and divorce that will really help you understand. Mm -hmm. So many times you'll see Yeshua talking about um, putting away and, and these things of a, of a, and, and the divorce is like a common theme in the new testament and it's being dealt with and there's a reason for it mm -hmm. um and some of that we'll look at tonight the word for um to to give her a give that written um certificate of divorce is kiratot and it's a cutting of the matrimonial bond so just think about it. divorce is like you were in covenant but now it's like cut it's it's severed it, it's like it's totally you're, you're separated. You know, God brought you together. You became one. But now divorce has made you, it, it basically dissolves that union through a cutting. So we know from the book of Jeremiah that God gave a certificate of divorce to the northern kingdom, the 10 tribes who were in the hand of Ephraim. The root word means to cut or to make a covenant, karath. So the root word for that certificate of divorce is to cut a covenant, but it's it's like, remember, like the Hebrew words, it's positive and negative. negative. So instead of adjoining, to cut a covenant is to, to be like God cut a covenant with Abraham and, and he joined, they, they were joined together in the certificate of divorce is given. It's, it's separating that covenant. It's, it's like you are divorced from the covenant. So Jeremiah 3, 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So Jeremiah is talking about the, the how Israel, he's talking about the northern kingdom, mm -hmm. and they got that cutting. They were divorced. They were cut off, if you will. So in Romans chapter 7, we learn 
um, um, amazing revelation that the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua is what the Lord uses to satisfy the Torah law and to make a new resurrected relationship between the exiled and divorced northern kingdom of the house of Israel. This also is what opened the door of salvation wide to all the nations. The northern kingdom had a pre-prophecy given to Ephraim and Manasseh of them multiplying like fish in the land and Ephraim would be the fullness of the nations. Mm -hmm. Romans 7, 2 through 4. For example, a married woman is bound by torture to her husband while he is alive. But if the husband dies, she is released from the part of the Torah that deals with husbands. Therefore, while the husband is alive, she will be called an adulteress if she marries another man. But if the husband dies, she is free from the part of the Torah, so that if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Thus, my brothers, you have been made dead with regard to the Torah, the curse and certificate of divorce through the Messiah's body, so that you may belong to someone else, namely the one who has been raised from the dead in order for us to bear fruit for God. And so mm. Yeshua is the first husband who, when he died, he freed the house of Israel from the certificate of divorce that was given to her by God, her husband. Mm -hmm. Now, after the resurrection, the new resurrected man, the Yeshua, is free to step in as a, quote, quote, new husband to right. the new resurrected born again house of Israel. So yeah. this is satisfying this curse of the law, this writ of this cutting away is now being dealt with. The one new man is Messiah and his born again bride. The two have become one or a hot. Yeah. Taught about this before, you can look at the scriptures, Romans 6 and Ephesians 2, to kind of get more understanding. It's a lot of revelation mm -hmm. and it's a mystery, but Paul yeah. figured it out. The mystery of how to bring the northern kingdom back is through the death, burial, and resurrection. Yeshua died, but also we died. He yeah. was buried, we are buried. But what happens? Yeah. He's raised, he's a new man. Mm -hmm. it, northern the house of Israel. Anyone who believes, you're raised. You become a new man. So now you get to be reunited, Yeah. you know, through Yeshua. Okay, Deuteronomy 24, 5. I love this, the happy year. When a man <laughs> takes a new wife, he is not to go out with the army or have any duty passed over him. He is to be free at home for one year and make his wife happy. <laughs> now, this is a total law. I don't I know if you it. guys realize this, but if you just got married and there was a war that broke out, the, the, the captains, the leaders, they could not come to your house and say, hey, you know, we need you. Mm -hmm. um, no, you, you, we're charging you. You know, you need, you, you need, it, it says he, you, he cannot be charged. Right. He right. cannot have duty passed over him. He is to be free at home for an entire year and make his wife happy. Now, this goes totally against mm -hmm. the common understanding, like, don't get married because that person's not there to make you happy. Yeah, exactly. It goes against everything we, we tell people. It's like, you should be happy by yourself. Really? That's not what the Bible says. The Bible <laughs> says you're going to get married and your husband is going to make you happy. That's right. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. So now most people, I know I never had the happy year. Did you get a happy year? No, Did we get, worked. From okay, day we one. worked. Okay. <laughs> but I wonder if this yeah. got restored yeah. and people who got married, the husband spent a whole year. Yeah. Making his wife happy, that marriage would probably be like, exactly. I don't know, level 29. Exactly. I don't know. Okay. It's the word, the happy is the word sama. <laughs> it means to brighten up, to make belief or belief or cleesome, to cheer up, to make them glad, to make her joyful, to make her merry, to make, it's a word for rejoice. Okay. Now. Okay. Wait a minute. I lost. Okay. So. Let's look where this scripture is about rejoice. The word Sama, Leviticus 23, 40. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of a goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So the word for rejoice mm. is tied into Sukkot, mm. where you rejoice before the Lord. But there's more to that. This The, the Sukkot season is the seventh feast representing the seven the seventh millennial which would would represent the millennial reign of the lord mm -hmm. where he would be with his bride for a thousand years and what's he doing making him happy <laughs> this is amazing yeah yeshua is going to fulfill the happy year yes it's a we're going to rejoice with him hallelujah 
for for you know seven days for a thousand years. I love okay, it. Okay, I think it's just amazing. <laughs> that that's a good husband. That's a good husband. Yeah, he's the best husband. And that now think about this. Um, go back. Remember the story of the woman at the well. She meets the seventh man. Yeah, exactly. The perfect man. She said, "I met a man." Right. So he's going to make her happy. And he does. He Rich, makes. makes you happy. Okay, Deuteronomy 24, 19. When you reap your harvest in your field and have forgotten the sheaf in the field, you are not to turn back to get it. It is for the outsider, for the orphan, and for the widow, in order that Adonai, your God, may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive tree, you are not to search through the branches afterward. It is for the outsider, for the orphan, and the widow. When you harvest your vineyard, you are not to pick over it afterward. It is for the outsider, for the orphan and the widow. You are to remember that you are a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I'm commanding you to do this thing. So the Lord is basically saying, that's your field. But don't think you need to get every single thing. You know, I've heard people right, say, I'm right. going to get, I'm going to clear the table. There's not going to be anything left that deal I'm getting. But here the scripture says, leave yeah. leftovers. Be purposeful. Don't try yes. to get every single, why? Because you, God is going to take care of you. I'm going to command you to do this thing because yeah. the blessing is going to be so great. When you take care of the widow, when you take care of the stranger, when you care of the, take care of the poor and the orphan, God, you're lending to the Lord. Yes. God's going to pay you back way more. Yes, and he amen. says, I'm commanding you. He, God said, Israel, you don't do business. You don't do war like anyone. You don't. So Leviticus 25, as we bring it to a close, you're going to see there's a commandment about no more than 40, 40 lashes. lashes. Don't muzzle, don't the, muzzle ox. the ox. Paul uses that. Then you're going to have the leverate marriage law for the death of a brother. So your law of Yibum, where a brother or a or it could be also we learn mm -hmm. in the Torah that it could be a family member, right? A, a, a kinsman redeemer who's going to take the 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 brothers the or the uh, the widow. Thank you, the widow, and marry. And I saw something I never saw. So just read, marry her for a purpose to mm -hmm. raise up a child, right? In the brother who dies name. Right. Deuteronomy 25. If brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, the widow of the deceased shall not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall be intimate with her after taking her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. It shall be that her firstborn son will be given the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be blotted out of Israel. For if the man does not want to marry his brother's widow's wife, then she shall go up to the gate of the city where court is held to the elders and say, my brother-in-law refuses to continue his brother's name in Israel. He is not willing to perform the duty of a husband's brother. Then the elders of the city will summon him and speak to him. And if he stands firm and says, I do not want to marry her, then the brother's widow shall approach him in the presence of the elders and pull his sandal off his foot and spit in his, in his face. And she shall answer and say, so it is done to the man who does not build up his brother's household. In Israel, his family name shall be the house of him whose sandal was was removed. So one of the things that I mm -hmm. that I never realized about this is that when this brother does do it, in this case, we learned that the brother refuses to do it. But when a brother does this or a kinsman does this, verse six says, it shall be that her firstborn son will be given the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be. But I never realized before, all the children after that firstborn son basically are the spiritual seed of that new brother. Right. But the firstborn son right. is connected to the brother that died. Uh, yes. The firstborn. Only yes. the firstborn. Yeah, I never right. saw that before. But this is the thing that bought, blew my mind. That when the person refuses to, you know, you take the sandal off, the woman's going to spit in his face. <laughs> um, but what I, you know what? I, there's going to be a, a name change given to the family of that brother who refuses yeah. to do this act of kindness, because basically in the exact opposite of what Abraham would do, exact opposite what Yeshua would do, because yeah. Yeshua basically did this. But your name, the family name shall be the house of him whose sandal was. So from now on, wherever this person goes, he's basically under a curse. Right. He's basically reproached. He didn't take care of his brother. Who's right, going to want to do right, business with him? Right, exactly. Who's going to want to hang? It's going to like change the family name. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That would be worth digging out about the, the especially if we talk about how beautiful are the feet. feet yeah. Who have the, the, the they you carry know, the carry gospel. the gospel. Okay. Yes. Going on at the end, you'll see there's got to be honest measuring, 
honest measuring in business. Hugh says, beware, you got to blot out Amalek. We'll just close with this. We got a few more minutes. Remember what Amalek did to you along the way as you came out from Egypt, how he happened upon you along the way and attacked those among you in the rear, all the stragglers behind you. When you were tired and weary, he did not fear God. Now in Adonai, your God grants you rest from all your enemies surrounding you in the land of Adonai, your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess. You are to blot out the memory of Amalek from under the heavens. Do not forget. And I think this is amazing. Mm. First, I can say, okay, God's kid said, when I give you rest from all their enemies, there is one spiritual enemy, if you will, that you must never forget. Because Amalek is, to my knowledge, is not even around today. Mm -mm. But there is a spiritual Amalek. Yeah. And he says that Amalek is a mean spirit. He right. wants to take away the names of the people. So because he tried to take away the names of the people, the stragglers, the young, the right. those who, the older people. He, say, he says, now, don't ever forget. You've got to, I think that's that's all. Yeah, uh, out his memory. Yeah, so I think that was just pretty, um, I'm just go ahead and stop sharing. Yeah. But I think that's, um, I think that's pretty, pretty amazing about, and we probably talked about, more about that on Shabbat, but I just, there's Amalek, Remember, Haman was a, was an came from that line. Yeah. Okay, and and it's believed even Hitler. Yeah. Came from that line. So right. that spirit, God's okay, warning us. It's like okay, even though I'm giving you rest from all that, there's a spiritual Amalek. Yeah. He's gonna when you yeah. think everything's fine or you just got a victory, you just came out of Egypt. Now he's gonna attack, and he attacks from the rear. When we're tired, you know, when we're weary. We know, we know Amalek comes from the right. work meeting to cool you off. He's coming to cool your fire. Right. You, you know, it's interesting. To make you lukewarm, if you will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to share before we... Um... I just think it's very interesting that first it talks about what you said about the husband that refuses to keep his family line going and his name is um, tainted and then he brings Amalek up right after that. So yeah. it's a there's a connection together, yeah. there because Amalek, we know, you know, like you said, it was an act of taking your brother's wife is an act of all the ultimate kindness, yeah. you know. And you're not raising him for you. You're raising right. him to raise up in the name of your brother. So his name right. and then Amalek, you've got to blot out. Right. Because Amalek was the most unkind. Yeah. So there's that connection of kindness. And I think it's actually threaded through the entire, this entire tour portion about being kind and, and being considerate and doing the right thing. And, you know, um, I know we get weary in that sometimes, you know, I know we all have this saying where, you know, I'm tired of being the only one that does the right thing. <laughs> if you've never said that, well, I'm going to raise my hand. Okay. Because, you know, when you're doing the right thing, and you're trying to shine your light. You've always got that spirit of Amalek on on the on your heels. on your <laughs> heels, trying to discourage, trying to frustrate your purpose, trying to make you feel that what you're doing is not really working. It's not really making a difference, yeah, or it doesn't yeah, matter. But yeah. it does matter. People are watching us, and it's the most unlikely people, the people that we don't know who are watching us from a distance. That, you know, that's the reason we got to continue this walk. We have to continue to be kind. We have to continue to lay down our lives and do the right thing because we don't know, you know, one act of kindness could transform, mm -hmm. you know, people in, in our lives. And um, I know yeah, that's yeah. what we're experiencing right yeah. now with my little Russian That's why we girls. have these roses behind us. Yeah, <laughs> we've got it, little, these, this family that's here for a month, our little Russian family. We're just loving on them and loving on them and loving on them. And I know um, they keep asking me more and more questions. And I know before they leave, I'm going to be able to share the gospel with them. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop.